what's up everybody? This is Arclay84 and welcome to my next uh, Let's Play. Uh, this time the game that I will be doing for you is as per requested since I got enough votes for it. I have decided to do Kirby's Dark Invaders. Um, this is a fan game made by a guy known as uh, Firestyle. Uh, where you can, where he has his, has this game and more at uh, YoYoGames.com. Uh, you can also find him on YouTube as I uh, YouTube at uh, I believe it's Megajord, Megazord, the Megajord. Yeah, the Megajord. So yeah, um, since uh, more of you wanted to see this than Kirbyvania, I've decided to go ahead and do this. So, without further ado, let's get in on and see what the story is for this game for Kirby's uh, next adventure. Okay, so apparently the story goes as thus. It is a peaceful day on Kirby's home planet Popstar. Kirby, however, is spending the day napping. Well, big surprise right there, I suppose, if he's not, you know, running around trying to eat everything or flying around or fighting, he's napping. He's doing one of two things, one of three things. He's either eating, fighting, or napping. <laughs> he doesn't do much else, really, you know. Man, but I think that's, that's Kirby for you. But unfortunately, it looks like his nap is cut short. Oh, no. No, nobody, nobody disturbs Kirby sleeping, unless there's a damn good reason to do so. So Kirby looks to the sky and sees something shocking. Oh, God, how could it be? Suddenly, a massive portal appeared in the sky, and out of it came two shadowy figures. Just what could they be after? Notice the dark swirl. Ooh. They've destroyed the Staff of Cosmos! No, no, not the Staff of Cosmos! Yeah, as if the Star Rod wasn't enough, since, you know, they couldn't do that, they decided to make another supreme weapon, and this one's now the Staff of Cosmos. Which, I'm willing to bet, it pretty much works the same way. It's just a different name, just to make it sound cool. But whatever, we'll go with that. It was the only thing standing in the way of those interdimensional, interdimensional invaders. Now we got characters not just coming from outer space, you know, in the far reaches of the galaxy. No, this is interdimensional we're talking here. Okay, so it looks like Popstar's in trouble once again. Who's going to help us now? Well, who do you think? Luckily, Kirby, being the hero he is, bravely set out to retrieve the pieces of the staff. So, in a sense, it's kind of sort of looking like the storyline of Kirby's adventure when he had to find the pieces of the Star Rod. So that he may use it to defeat the invaders and send them back to where they came from. Good luck, Kirby! Da -da 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 -da. Kirby, Invaders from the Dark! I gotta admit, that's not a bad looking title that, uh,. This guy managed to put together. This thing was made with Game Maker. I think it was like a 6.1 something. I gotta say, um, for a game like this, it's not half bad. I've played some Game Maker games, and I've played some that, you know, graphics, uh, mechanics and everything were pretty sloppy, but this was actually pretty good. Okay, um, I like the, the different kind of custom, different kind of sprites and artwork and stuff that was put into this. Especially with the backgrounds, the graphics look real nice. So, we got a choice between new game or load game. You only get one save file instead of, you know, normally three for a typical Kirby game. But we're going to start a new game. So, yes, let's start a new game. And we will be starting in level one, the Marsh Meadows. Why does it almost sound like Marsh Meadows? Almost like saying Marshmallows. Oh, that's kind of weird. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and head in since that's the only place we can be at. Okay, well, what do we have here? We got your basic, uh, typical uh, world map of sorts. You get to choose what door to go into to go to the next level. That's kind of the same style as Kirby's Adventure. You can go out the previous door and you can choose what world to go to next. Excuse me. Uh, you got your typical life bar here. You got six hits. That's kind of the classic style there. Six hits, and you die. The three represents how many lives you get. 
And normally I would probably say, as far as controls go, I would ask you, for those that are playing this game, to refer to the readme file or instruction file that comes with this game. But, this person that made the game was so nice to go ahead and give us a bit of tutorial. Notice these question mark bubbles. All you gotta do is jump into them, and you get some important information. So, we welcome you to Dreamland. Here are some of the basic actions you can do. Okay. So you got the arrow keys to move around, you got Z to jump, X to attack, or to, you know, inhale, and whatever. Shift to drop an ability, you can float by pressing Z repeatedly. Enter, you can pause or show attacks, and that's about it. That's the basic uh, gist of things, so... Yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, however, in my case, I am currently using a pad. Now, while normally there isn't a feature on this game that allows, that normally allows game pads and normally make you use your keyboard, there is, this is something that Simply Joy to Keek wouldn't fix. So, with that in mind, if you play this game, customize, customize controls to however you need be that suits you the most. Now, so, here you come to the main level hub, as I said. Here you can access different stages and you get a boss. So, of course, to progress, you need to complete the various stages, blah, blah, blah. You can access Havens here or go to the level select screen. And what he means by Haven is this room right here, which would normally you would go to, if you recall, from Kirby's Adventure. That would be the Copy Museum or Ability Room that lets you choose what ability you want to go with. Now, this space right here... Actually, let's let this guy do... Let's let this bubble do the talking. This little area you're in is called a haven. Every level has its own haven, which provides you with three ability trophies. Simply touch a trophy as, as normal Kirby to automatically gain an indicated ability. Every haven also houses a save point. That pe pedestal over there is a save point. Stand on top of it and press space to save your game. So yes, save often. And of course with the enter, or in my case the start button, this, is, this explains what attacks you can do with whatever ability you have. So, let's go ahead and start things off by saving the game. And I'll show you the abilities that we have uh, at our disposal currently. We have the Beam ability, which if you remember uh, Kirby Superstar, then you may you have a bit, bit of an idea of how the attacks go. Um, of course, in order, in order to get other abilities when touching these trophies, you have to go ahead and drop it or else it will not work. Why it's made that way, I don't know, but a tiny nitpick, not going to complain. And then, of course, you've got your Cutter ability, which pretty much works the same way. And then there is the Fire ability, which this, uh, again, you've got your Fire Breath, you've got your Fireball that you can do, you can do the Stomp, and what have you, or Meteor Strike, as I call it. So I think what we're going to start things off with is Fire. We'll start things off with fire. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, let us begin the first level. You want to learn to use the various abilities of the land if you want to save it to copy an ability. Press X to inhale. Well, yeah. Inhale is normal Kirby. Press down on your mouth to full. You swallow them. If inhale and barely gives you ability, Kirby will transform. Like so. And did I mention how much I hate those uh, big bear-like enemies? Those are always annoying. Okay, now another thing I want to point out as far as uh, uh, floating goes, you're actually limited into how long you can be in the air before Kirby's arms tire out and have to give way to the ground. Uh, while I do find that slightly annoying, but then again, this is how they did uh, on a lot of uh, later Kirby games. Uh, after, um, say, Superstar and such. So, minor nitpick, I can easily adjust. Ooh, bomb. It's always good to have the bomb ability. Uh, food, of course, restores your powers. Oh, and check this out. Even underwater, you can use your abilities. Now, normally, what I'm used to seeing is if you're underwater, you automatically, you know, go around, you know, spitting water in enemies' faces. That's not the case here, which I kind of sort of like. Oh yes, this guy. Spark apparently does not exist in this game. Whenever you find the guys like this, you instead get Plasma, which is, in my opinion, much better. Because if you remember Plasma ability from Superstar, you get the basic idea. And then, of course, you've got your typical Warp Star that teleports you around the different parts of the stage. 
Now, normally in most Kirby games, a lot of Kirby games I've seen, these enemies give you no ability. However, in this game, there's the clean ability. You can sweep dust into enemies' faces. Holding down, you can lob water, buckets of water at enemies' faces. And then there's, uh, let's see, near the enemy, you can do a broom bat. Or you can, when the dash, you can also fly on your broom. Kind of like, yeah. Kind of, kind of neat. I also like, I also like how the, the sound effect you make, that makes when you destroy these star bricks, is like destroying bricks on Super Mario Brothers. I always thought it was kind of funny. Ah, yes. And then we have this little critter here that would normally give you the spike ability. Which we might get later. Let's see, remember press enter to see the various actions. Well, we've already been doing that, so we already know. Hmm, let's get something else. I'm getting tired of, uh, clean. Let's go back to fire. Fire seems to be working out alright. Actually, no. I better take plasma. I like that better. Like I said. Ha! I always love charging it up and... Ah, take on it. Oh, and that's not all that this ability can do now. If you hold down, this acts like the spark ability then. Hold up, and you can cause a thundercloud. A line of a plasma like thunder above your head. Good for hitting enemies above. So this, this is a pretty well-balanced ability. Pretty powerful too. Okay, now at the end of every stage you go through, you got this cannon that you can jump into, and if you time it right, you get a pretty nice bonus from, say, getting one piece of food to two pieces to a tomato to one or three one-ups. Now here's where I have one little complaint. This little gauge right here goes a wee little bit too fast. I don't like that too much because it really tends to mess up my timing when I want to try to get it at least as close to full as possible without suddenly going to empty, as I've made this mistake a lot. But let's see if I can time it right. Well, it wasn't perfect, but at least I got myself a one-up. This game is sometimes generous with one-ups, but still, you want to be careful because there are some obstacles I've come across that can be pretty sketchy. Meanwhile, we got the... That was another ability you can still get, which is the yo-yo. Which, that's still nice. And there's even some abilities that... Um, upon my first playing through, I didn't even know you could do. But I'm, I'm thinking the reason why that is, is because... Uh, it's, they've probably existed in other Kirby games I've yet to play. Such as Kirby's Return to Dreamland for the Wii. Or... Um, Squeak Squad, or and such. So, yeah, if you recognize them, hey, it could be a bit of nostalgia to you. Mid-bosses are powerful enemies that require several hits to defeat. Only when defeated can you inhale them for an ability. And as if we already don't know that. Paint Roller. I remember when this guy used to be, like, a boss boss, but apparently he's a mid, he's a mid boss in this game. Pretty much acts about the same way um, as in Kirby's Adventure, he's just a little bit quicker, slightly. Just uh, keep your distance from him, and... Okay, that was a cheap shot right there. That's messed up. Alright, I guess we're doing it the old-fashioned way. By bombing him! This won't take too long. Oh yes! Paint! Paint has, has, has had a bit of an upgrade compared to what you might be used to seeing in, in Superstar. While Paint normally would only be a one-time ability, here, you've got different abilities you can do depending on what directional direction you're, you're, having, you're holding down for, for Kirby. Such as the Spray Paint, the Paint Swirl, or the Copy, or Paint Out. And I gotta say, it's a pretty nice ability to have. Especially with the, co the co copy Kirby. 
It can be rather cheap sometimes, but it's all it's always good when you're in a tight in a tight jam. One of my favorites, one of them. Uh, some somewhere next to bomb and another ability, which I will be showing you later on as we go along. Ah, and then there's the fighting ability. I'm not done with paint yet. I kind of want to keep that. Thank you. I love the Kirby thing. That's that's where it has the most range. And then there's Wing. Wing also makes a return, but these guys can be rather cheap sometimes. And whether there's fi there's fire, there's gonna be ice. And then of course there's the classic sword. We can't forget that. Let's see. And let's get to the exit before we end up losing another life. All right, let's shoot our way up. And wow, that was bad timing on that one. Oh man. See, this is what I mean. I kind of hate the way they make it so freaking hard to time your shots when it comes to the end of the level. But oh well, I suppose I can look past it. Anyways, third stage. Um, I think as far as what we're going to do for today's episode, we might go at least until the end of the first level, and then we'll probably call it, because they're really not that long at all. Um, depends on it, though some of it can get, some of the difficulty in these levels can get rather cheap. And I should have jumped. Even though you may know the controls, the handling of it can still take some getting used to, because again... This is um, this is a game from made out of Game Maker, so can it's it's not it's not going to be anything like Ninten pure Nintendo quality official game like if you follow. But I mean, even still, um, the game's not that bad. It's it's really not. I'm I've had a lot of fun uh, on my first playthrough of this, and I did not realize that I had lost my bomb ability. That's okay. That's all right. I can make do with um, with wing. At least for now. Although I kind of wish it'd be kind of nice if I was also given the option to create a second player buddy like in Superstar. That'd have been pretty sweet, but that probably would have made the game way too easy. Fun, but way too easy. Which, that's okay. I can live without. No biggie deal. Okay. I hate dealing with this guy right there. Oh! Get out of my face! Whoop! I wonder if these flowers actually have any use. I guess they don't. Whoa! I didn't realize cannons could shoot downward like that. That's a first. You gotta really watch it with these things. Well, there's Clean. I suppose being Mr. Clean is something we could do. Although I kind of want to... You know what? I kind of wanted to get a uh, Needle, but... Eh. Oh, well. Or, on the other hand, I can always get this back again. That's just so cheap. All right, end of the next stage, and let's see what bonus we get. Another ice cream. Oh well, we still got four lives. We still got plenty. So let's head to stage four then. Ooh. We are at a castle, which seems kind of familiar. Eh, I don't need beam. I'd rather keep it this way. I do find it a nice touch how you got some small waddle dees and then you've got like big waddle dees coming at you just for a good challenge. Oh, and also, love the music choices that they use for some of these levels. A lot of them from uh, past Kirby games, uh, they get thrown in the mix. Like some from Superstar, some from uh, uh, Adventure, of course, 
and possibly some other uh, Game Boy uh, or perhaps even Super Nintendo uh, Kirby games, whichever. And I just lost my plasma again, didn't I? Oh god, there's bonkers. And when there's bonkers, there's a chance of a hammer ability. So, looks like we're fighting in the old-fashioned way here. This shouldn't take too long. I thought he'd try to jump up in the air and, uh... Uh, no, not really, I guess. Give me that hammer. So you got the hammer nail, hammer swing, giant swing, ultra giant swing, and the flip. I always love the flip. That's like some power right there. Holy crap. Oh, this one's new. At least to me it was. Water. Now, this one's another one that was probably in a, a Kirby game I've not played yet. I'm going to guess Return to Dreamland. And, wow, that ability really worked out for me well. Uh, not. <laughs> uh, let's try something more... Something more classic. Let's try the Cutter ability and see how that goes. Yeah, there we go. Basic to the short, sweet to the point. Get out of my way. I don't trust you guys. Let's see, I'll just fly up past you. Ain't no need for me to kill you. And with that, we come to the end of stage four. There we go. Now that's what I'm talking about. Perfect shot. Get you three... I thought it was three one-ups. I guess I was wrong. Maybe it was two. Okay. So about every single level you go through, you got four stages to go through, and then there is the boss fight. So make sure you're well prepared. Uh, go ahead and get whatever ability you want to keep. In this case, go ahead and s we're going to save our game. And get ready for our first boss fight, people. Now, normally when it comes to Kirby games that I've played in the past, what's the one boss that you most, you're most likely to see? The fight first. Would it be Wispy Woods? While that might normally be the case for a lot of games, this is not one of them. No, sir. The first boss that you're actually, we're actually going to be facing is, for the first star piece, is King DDD himself. The only other Kirby game where I've seen King DDD being the first boss that I can recall was Kirby's uh, Crystal Shards for the 64. Now, I, I, I want to say that's the only game, but I could be wrong. If I am wrong, correct me in the comments with what other games besides that 64 game that, Kirk, that DDD was the first boss. So as you can see, since I had Cutter, he was no problem to defeat. He's really not that not that bad at all. So we got our first star piece. Yay! And with that, we unlock level two, Buoyant Bay. And with that, peoples, I think we shall be calling in an episode for today. We've gone on for about 24 minutes now. So we're going to go in here and save our game. And join me next time for Kirby for Let's Play Kirby Dark Invaders as we go through level 2 of this uh, of this adventure. So until then, I've been your host Arclady4 and I bid you all adieu for now. Until next time, my friends.